Hi everyone, it's James here from the Studio Rats and TSR Jivey Talks Tech, but this video is strictly for the guitar player. Well, the guitar player and techie, who knows? Um, a little backstory, if I may. You see behind me not only one, but two of our rather beautiful Cornell Amplification TSR20 amplifiers. And that got me to thinking, how often do us mere mortals get hold of two, not just practically identical, but absolutely identical amps? And I thought, not very often. So you can see where my chain of thought was going. Stereo guitar rigs. So I've got two 4x12s. Okay, they are different, but you know, they're still 4x12 cabinets. And a lot of modern pedals are stereo. But what does that mean? Stereo just means left and right, right? Well, it actually just means two different signals that combine to form an interesting image. And I thought, well, I'm going to build a stereo board and I'm going to record some stereo guitar because that's fun, right? For no other reason than because it's fun. So what I'd like to do is noodle for you a little bit with some of the pedals I have down here. Uh, I'll take you through the board. I'll take you through the rig. On our live Q&A show the other evening, um, I mentioned that I might take this a stage further and have dry center plus left right effects because quite frankly i can get my hands on another cornell and we have some more speakers and that might work really well but for now let's just enjoy some stereo loveliness <laughs> So a little tour of the rig, if I may. We have our two beautiful Cornell TSR20s, one on each side. They are set up identically. Um, effectively, they're just being some tone and an amplification section for the speakers at this stage. Uh, we're not driving them particularly hard. They are just being a pedal platform, which they are great for. We then have two 4x12s, my Marshall 4x12 and the Wazza 4x12, and they are being miked by a Violet Microphones Amethyst. Uh, I think Violet are part of Jay-Z microphones now. And these things are excellent. Really lovely on guitar cabs. Nice and bright. Plenty of body and sound great. They also sound great for drum overheads. But in this case, they sound phenomenal on guitar cabinet. It's a condenser mic, so it needs phantom power. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much that end of things. Down here is where things start to get a little bit interesting, and I'm going to talk you through some of my reasonings behind some of the pedals I've chosen. Now, agreed, it's not the tidiest of pedal boards, I'm sorry about that, but this was just thrown together for this video, for a bit of fun. First of all, we're hitting the Voodoo Labs Giggity pedal. Now, I love this thing because it has a really neat way of being able to turn a humbucker sound into a single coil sound, and a single coil into a humbucker. Now, I think it does humbucker to single coil far better, which is why I've got it set on its full sun setting and quite a lot of air turning my Les Paul into a kind of Telecaster-esque sound. We then hit the Boss GE7 EQ. I've wound in a lot of 400, a lot of 800 to give me some more honk for my kind of Gary Moore-esque lead sound. Most of my guitar tones are coming from this baby. This is the Universal Audio Lion 68 Super Lead Amp. Now, I've turned the cabinet emulations off because obviously I have real cabinets and I'm just using it really as my kind of preamp, if you like, my, my guitar preamp tone. So I've got a kind of a clean-ish basement sound there and a filthy-ish basement sound on there. Of course, kicking the EQ as well and it fattens it all up nicely. Between the Giggity, the EQ and the Lion, we are running mono. We're also running mono out of the Lion into this baby. Now, this is the TC Stereo Chorus Flanger Modulator thing. This thing is amazing. I love this thing. Um, it's, to me, the ultimate stereo chorus effect. It's awesome. So you've got chorus, pulse modulation, or flange, and it sounds great in every mode you use it in. It's very, very cool. Now we start to go stereo, stereo out left and right, into the stereo in left and right of the TC flashback. Again, this is a great delay. I usually have it set on 2290, 
the amazing TC2290 delay or with modulation, depending on what I've got this set to. Uh, I love this thing. It's really, really cool. I've got three delays stored in there and I love it. And you can pick these up dirt cheap at the moment. Now you'll see a complete mishmash of cables around here now, unfortunately, because Strymon, in their infinite wisdom, are using TRS tip ring sleeve jacks for the ins and outs, the stereo I.O. in their Strymon Cloudburst, thanks to Al for lending me this one. So I'm having to create them and stuff, which works perfectly well, but it's a bit of a fudge. We are then running stereo out into two mono jacks, which run off to the amps. So lots of fun to be had with stereo boards. Um, what's been successful here? Well, quite frankly, Paul and I were not initially enamored with the UA Lion pedal. But actually, in this scenario, it works really well. Actually, if you turn the cab emulation on as well, even running through cabs, it sounds really cool. It fattens it up. I'm not quite sure why that works as well as it does. Maybe it's because I'm then running out into other pedals, which is then kind of changing the impedance back to something a bit more amp and speaker friendly. I'm not sure, but it sounds great. <laughs> Now, Paul and I have always agreed on one thing. It's a rare thing, but it does happen occasionally. Um, that modelers, things like the Quad Cortex or the Helix, they always sound better in stereo. Now, that could be a pair of FRFR PA cabs, if you like, in front of you. Um, but this is definitely taking that whole argument. I know it's not a modeler, obviously. Well, I suppose the line is kind of a digital pedal, so it kind of could be. But this is taking that whole argument one stage further. And quite frankly, being sat between these two cabinets separated by um, my Tatrix Gobos, it's absolutely epic. I really hope it translates as well onto the recordings. Um, interestingly, on the recording front, I am trying out a new piece of kit. Uh, this has been sent to us by the team at IK Multimedia. This is the Quadro IO, um, one of the smallest, most compact audio interfaces I've seen in a really long time. The mic pre sound great. We've got four of them on board, hence the quadro bit. This is kind of a multi-purpose device. It's doing some really cool stuff, but in this sort of lineup, I'm using it as the main audio interface, and it's doing a great job. Phantom power, it's got all the stuff that you need. 
it can do so many other things. It can also be a mixer. It can also be a kind of a field recorder into your camera. Um, really, really cool device. So I thought I'd give that a go on this project as well. So loads of new toys being used on this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun to put together. If you have got something out of the video, please like, subscribe, hit that bell, all the normal stuff. If you would also be good enough to consider liking and subscribing to TSR Jivey Talks Tech, our sister channel, bit more technical, bit more recording, other stuff, not just guitars. That would be great as well. Uh, but for now, my name's James Ivey from the Studio Rats and TSR Jivey Talks Tech, and I'll see you again very soon.